What ultimately drove the mammoths to extinction is difficult to know. Some speculate that the warming climate reduced mammoth populations dramatically, just as humans arrived to deal the final blow. Roughly 4,000 years ago, while the pyramids were being built in Egypt, the last mammoth perished, and the species ceased to exist. About 12,000 years ago, the ice began to melt. The world's climate had shifted again, marking the end of the Pleistocene and the dawn of the Holocene epoch. Our modern climate era had begun. As the glaciers melted, trickles became torrents, and North America was awash in rivers and floods. By the end of the last ice age, 70% of the world's largest land animals had vanished, gone forever. On my journey through the Americas, I've seen how giants are vital for our planet. But we're living through a period of unrivaled change. And history tells us that during these times, the biggest animals are often the first to disappear. Until recently, South America was home to a whole host of colossal creatures. Flightless terror birds towered three meters tall. Their long beaks could shatter bone. The Glyptodon was a giant armadillo that grew to the size of a car. And huge ground sloths loomed as tall as giraffes. But around 11,000 years ago, these lumbering giants were unable to adapt to a shift in climate and were all driven to extinction. One unusual place hidden within the Ice Age scrublands tells an exceptional though grim story. Tar pits. A Colombian mammoth lured by drinking water has perished, likely from dehydration and exposure after getting trapped in the tar. Its carcass is of interest to this saber-toothed cat. She's hungry. A mammoth is a temptation worth the risk. On this day, the tar has claimed another victim. And the smell of death attracts others. For 40,000 years, countless predators and prey were mired in this death trap, their bones sinking into and preserved by the tarry asphalt. On the island of Pinzon, rats consume nearly every single egg, leaving the tortoise population on the brink of extinction. But another island lost its tortoise population altogether. Pinta, located on the shipping route around the northern fringe of the archipelago, was a favorite stopover for ships and their hungry crews, and the unique Pinta tortoise was presumed extinct by the early 20th century. 
But in 1972, an amazing discovery was made and filmed. A living male pinta tortoise was discovered in the undergrowth. He was taken off to a protected enclosure on the main island to live out his days in comfort and safety. Here, he became an international celebrity, and he was given a name to reflect his state. Lonesome George. He's about 80 years old, and he's getting a bit creaky in his joints, as indeed am I. He is arguably the rarest animal in the world. Certainly, there can be none rarer, for he is the last of his kind. His female died a long, long time ago. When he dies, the pinta species of Galapagos tortoise will be extinct. But he is a very important animal. Probably more than any other single creature, he's focused the attention of the world on the fragility of our environment, and he stimulated science to look into whole new areas of research here in the Galapagos. Just 14 days after we filmed Lonesome, he died in his sleep. But he's not forgotten. Lonesome George's story like Darwin's fleeting but famous visit 200 years ago, has attracted many visitors to the islands. Professor Mike Marnie takes the responsibility to begin the long task to collect and gather the critical host frog. With his son and daughter, he begins the search. Whereabouts? Just there on this branch. This is a tree frog, and the frog that yeah. we're going to be working on is a ground frog. If he can't find a suitable host frog, the project again will be finished before it starts. The problem here is that the gastric brooding frog is a very deep lineage. It's about 50 million years of independent evolution from the other major families of Australian frogs. It's on, a, it's, on its own line. Frogs are shy animals, and being nocturnal are hard to find. The gastric brooding frog was no exception. It was first found by accident in this forest stream in Queensland in 1971. David Lean, now in his 70s, was the first person to collect the species and still vividly remembers that day. Lo and behold, you know, nine o'clock in the morning, you know, I walked the stream bed, uh, rocky stream bed, and I saw frog jumping. Hey, wait a minute, what is going on here? And then that was the reason I just happened to find and caught that frog. I, I didn't realize it's a new frog. A second species of gastric brooding frog was later discovered by a team headed by Mike Marnie. By 1984, there was this great fear that we'd lost the gastric brooding frog and then we discovered a second species. We went up to this um, stream by day and uh, put my arm down and went under this boulder thinking, well, there's crayfish and there's who knows what under this boulder. So lo and behold, that's, that's what it was, uh, the second species of gastric brooding frog. So I have the dubious uh, sort of record of having described a frog, found a new species, and it was known for two years before it went extinct. The difficult search for a host frog continues. Oh. 